Hello everybody, my name is Andres Ortiz and I'm with the Summer 2020 Sprint Optimizer Group. Today I'm going to be taking you through our project, showing you all the bells and whistles, all the function and functionality of our project and some use cases, show you what exactly our project does and how it works. So to get started, here we have the Sprint Overview Graph, which is a useful page for developers and managers alike. It shows you uh, all the stories you have in your, in your uh, Sprint and it shows you uh, uh, the time statistics for them. Like For example, here you have the original estimate, how long you thought it would originally take to complete, how much time you've spent working on it, how much time you went over the original estimate, how much time you went under the original estimate, and how much time you have left to reach the original estimate goal. And uh, all we did for this page was uh, do a couple bug fixes here and there. And uh, other than that, it's, it's mostly the same as what the, the first team left for us except for the few bug fixes. You can uh, get rid of different values here if you want to, to just like see a couple of them to see how they compare. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a fairly simple page. And most of the work that we did went into the resource allocation page. So let me show you that. First thing you gotta do here is select a sprint, select sprint three. And then here you have the resource allocation tables. So this is also very useful for developers and managers alike. So let's say you're a manager and you, you want to keep track of, the, of each of your developers. So select one of them. And here you can see all the subtasks and stories assigned to a particular developer. You can see how many stories they have. You can see how long they worked on each subtask. You can see the descriptions for each subtask and story. And uh, if the developer or the manager sees fit to do it, they can change various values in here. Like if they think the, the remaining estimate is going to take longer than they thought, they can go in here and change it to 15, uh, and it saves. And then you can change the description of the subtask, subtask, description, and then hit save. And then you can change the, the story description as well. This one updates in real time if it needs to, so since there are three story ones here, it's going to update them all at the same time once I change them. This is story one, save, and you see they all updated in real time there. And then uh, you can see if we reload the page, all of these values are going to stay the same because they do actually update and save in JIRA. We go here, see 15, subtest description, and this is story one. All these values do save. And then uh, the developer or the manager can also uh, add new stories to each developer here. So you select which story you want to add the subtask to. So let's do subtask one. And then you estimate how long it's going to take you. Let's do 10 hours. And then you put a description. This is a new subtask. And you hit save and it's going to show up right up here. There it is. This is story one assigned to me. Uh, description that we put and the amount of hours that we said we would work on it. And then down here you have the total statistics for each individual developer and the total statistics for the entire team should the developer or the manager need this information. And then we also we added uh, tool tips for some of the more confusing uh, values here just so that you are sure of what each of them does. And uh, we also we changed the design of this page from the original one that was left before because it was a little cluttered and confusing before. So we uh, we changed it, we updated it, we made it more user friendly and uh, easier to use. Uh, next we have story breakdown, which is very similar to this. It's basically the same thing, but the opposite. You instead of selecting developer, you se you select each individual story, and you can see what uh, what each subtask in this story is and who it's assigned to. And again, you can go in here and change whatever values you want. And then it'll update in real time here too, see? And again, you can add a new uh, subtask to this story. And again, you have the statistics for the story, total statistics, and the team total statistics are still down here. So these two are very similar, uh, but uh, they're just different points of view on the same thing really. And next we have a brand new tab that we added, the additional analytics page. This one is useful for mostly managers if they need to send like weekly reports to their supervising managers. 
which they often do with these values. So we added this so that they don't have to calculate these values themselves. This page here shows the, the throughput, which is how many stories each uh, uh, your team completed in a certain period of time. We have 30 day throughput, one week, uh, two week throughput, and one week throughput. And here we have a, a tool tip that t tells you uh, what throughput is and how it's calculated. And uh, then we have cycle time, average cycle time, which here it says approximate measure of how long it takes your team to finish a single subtask, right? And uh, your team's average cycle time in this case is 3.05. It's how long it takes your team to finish a subtask. And then you have daily work in progress, which is which is just a, a measure of, of how many stories on average your team completes in a single day. In this case, it's 7.53. And again, you can go here and see what it is and how it's calculated. And then this chart here is your team's weekly throughput every week for four weeks. So this week your team completed 12 stories. Last week they completed four. Two weeks ago they completed 32 stories. And uh, three weeks ago they completed 20 stories. This data is a little skewed because we've just been like moving things in and out of done kind of randomly for testing. But normally it would look, uh, should look a bit more even at least. And uh, yeah, it's, that's the analytics page. The manager comes in here, he takes a look at this data, and then he can easily write up the report for his boss and send it to him, where otherwise before he would have to uh, calculate these values himself. And then lastly, we have the, uh, the backlog page. This is more of a prototype page. We were running out of time, we weren't able to finish it, so it doesn't actually work as intended. But the, the basic idea is that you're able to see your entire backlog here, add things to it, change things in it, right? But uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time. So all, all it does right now is that you can just add something here, how long you think it takes. And then you add it, and then it shows up here. And then story 6, 10, and then you add it. And then uh, you can edit these values if you want. Change this to 5, this to 5, this to 1. You edit it, and then it changes there. Right, and you can delete to. Again, like I said, this uh, it, it's a, a prototype, a rough prototype. It doesn't actually work completely. It's supposed to bring in the backlog from Jira, but it doesn't. Uh, so yeah, for any future groups uh, coming in to work on this, this is a good place to start fixing all this, getting it to actually work properly. And uh, yeah, that concludes the uh, guided tour of our Sprint Optimizer for Summer 2020. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.